Dr. Yin works in the area of transportation systems analysis, modeling, and has published approximately 140 refereed papers in, his, in, in leading academic journals. Dr. Yin currently serves as the area editor of transportation science, associate editor of transportation research part B, methodological and department editor of <laughs> surface science, and was the editor in chief of transportation research part C between 2014 and 2020. Dr. Yin received his PhD from the University of Tokyo, Japan in 2002, his master's and bachelor degrees from Tsinghua University, Beijing, China in 1996 and 1994, respectively. Prior to his current appointment at the University of Michigan, he was a faculty member at University of Florida between 2005 and 2016, a postdoctoral researcher and then assistant research engineer at the University of California at Berkeley between 2002 and 2005. Between 1996 and 1999, he was a lecturer at, at Tsinghua University. Dr. Yin has received recognition from different institutions, including the Moreau Brown Foundation Educational Excellence Award from the University of Michigan, a doctoral mentoring award from the University of Florida, and Stella DeFormos Best Paper Award. Um, Ruichi Kitamura Paper Award, and Kikuchi Karloftis Best Paper Award from Transportation Research Board. Today's presentation is titled, Leveraging Connectivity and Automation to Improve Intersection Traffic Control. Vehicular traffic control at grade and at grade intersections has been extensively studied in the traffic science and engineering literature. Intersections um, and where conflicting traffic movements compete for the right-of-way and thus delay or accidents will likely occur. The essence of intersection control is resource right-of-way allocation. Finding optimal intersection control belongs to the class of NB-complete problems, even under various simplifying assumptions, such as relaxing the acceleration-deceleration limits. In this talk, he will discuss how connected and automated vehicle technology can be leveraged to transform intersection control. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh Thanks for coming to my uh, session today. Um, so as Debbie mentioned, today I would like to um, take this uh, opportunity. This is my first in-person talk after two years. So I just want to use the opportunity to share with you my recent thoughts on how to leverage um, connectivity and automation to transform into session control. So this is not a visioning talk that you typically hear from this symposium. Instead, I'd like to do some more theoretical discussion about how we can leverage connected and automated vehicle technology to transform, transform the principle of right-of-way allocation for intersection control. Okay. It's a theoretical talk, but I the audience has a background. I promise you I will not put any equipment. I try the best to make and study this subject today can provide you a new perspective on this topic. And for those who didn't study that subject, but I believe you actually you enjoy and you observe can how the intersection control is being conducted in practice. So I hope my talk today can give you better appreciation about the subtlety and difficulty of this subject. Okay? So to start, I'd like to uh, my uh, collaborators who contribute to the intellectual content of my talk today. And Mujitaba and she are two young men who actually are still heading the research that's contribute to the intellectual content of today's topic, today's presentation. Um, I also would like to thank my sponsor, Toyota National Science Foundation. Last but not the least, uh, so SACAT has been 
very generous supporter to my research program, not just on this subject and many other subjects, quite a few other topics. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank CCAT uh, for their continued support to my research program. So um, in today, I would just first give a very brief introduction about the nature of the internet, how we discuss why I believe connectivity and automation can help. And then we're going to talk about misconceptions that are preserved that appear in the literatures or public press about how you can leverage CO to do intersection control, to improve intersection control. And then I'm going to share some of the new results and insights with you. So, um, so I think an intersections is where the traffic stream right meet and competing for the right of way. Delay and accident. For the essence of the intersection really is the resource allocation. The resource we talk about here is the right of You want to pay, right, to ensure creation to be safe, to be efficient, to be sustainable. So that's the essence of the problem. So if you really want to conceptualize the problem or visualize the problem, and you think about the intersection of two dimension space, and the Z will be the time when the vehicle traverses the intersection, you have a trajectory in this 3D space, right? So the inter intersection control really is about how I move this trajectory, ensure that trajectory do not collide with each other in the space, and you want to minimize delay, you want to maximize throughput, right? So the two layer of decision, the first one is path determination. In this talk, when I talk about path, I refer to that if you project this 3D trajectory to the 2D space, 2D dimension to space, path, right? Literally, that's the path that the vehicle follow to traverse through the intersection. That's the first decision. The second decision is building of the edge. So because the path may have some conflict point want to away those conflict to ensure collision for maximize the report to minimize delay. So that is So a good analogy for this problem, and I hope you can remember in the future if you even you didn't study problem, I call them a spaghetti problem. So the 3D dimension is the box. You have a spaghetti, you want to enter this box. They have a desire to have arrival time. You want to schedule when this spaghetti enter the box and then spaghetti gonna travel through this, 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 this empty box and then leave the box from another side of the box. So the height difference, the entering point, the leaving point will be, right, the time spent in this intersection, you want to minimize the total summation of this space, the gap. If you want to maximize throughput, you want to put as many as spaghetti into the box, you make sure the spaghetti do not collide each other, there's, there's sufficient buffer between those spaghetti, and you want to put as many as possible. You want to maximize throughput. Okay, that's a spaghetti problem. So if you think about a spaghetti problem, it's actually difficult because there's a lot of combination, right? It's combinatorial in nature. So this problem actually exists for a long time, arguably since the invention of the automobile. Okay, a difficult problem. Now look at how traffic engineer has solved them. So it turned out to be that traffic engineers solve this problem in a two sequential approach. They decompose these two decisions into two stage decision. The first stage, this stage decision is I determine the path. I design the intersection layout geometry. The second stage decision will be I schedule the entries. Two stage decision. So for the first stage decision, for example, for some of the intersection design, if you use elevation to avoid the conflict, you eliminate the need of second stage decisions. But if you think about at grade intersections, and then you first design the geometry, right? Because it's, uh, there's two dimensional space, so those paths are gonna cross each other. They're gonna have, have conflict points. And then you're gonna think about the principle 
how I schedule the entry to ensure collision free. The principle can be very simple. And for example, roundabout, you don't need any control devices. You just need a rule, right? And for this intersection, typical four-way intersection, and the principle can be first come, first serve. In this case, you need a simple device, stop sign. But sometimes if you want to even improve the efficiency, your principle can be very, can be more difficult and more complicated. And then you need a traffic light, okay? The traffic light here, I want to, want to emphasize, the traffic light essentially is a device that implements a principle of right-of-way allocation, okay? So now, if you, because the traffic lights, signal light intersection is the, what we typically use in practice. So let's look at how we actually do this. So the first stage decision, so the first stage decision, and you use the follow of design standard in this country, we say you follow the green book, right? You follow the green book, you design the intersection layout, so that's essentially, you've solved the first stage decision problem. The second stage, you want to schedule the entry. So when you do the first stage for this particular design, and even for this simple, uh, for the, even for the left turn, you have 14 conflict points, right? You have 14 conflict In total, the roughly, I didn't calculate, but you can calculate maybe 48 um, total conflict points. And then you need the right of the allocation principle to schedule the entry to avoid conflict. The principle has been grouping and taking turn. The grouping and taking turn principle is you group the long conflicting stream together, right? You group the long conflicting movement together with one group and assign the right away to one group at a time while all the other group are waiting. That's the principle. The key issue here is how do you group them, right? How do you group them? So if you study traffic engineering, you know that if you look at Lima phase representations, that's how you group them, right? So you use one, two, three, four, the odd number to represent left turn, the even number represent the through movement. Right turn, right turn will be combined with, the through, combined with the through movement. And then you talk about Lima phase representations, and you have Rin A, Rin B at one side of barrier. Rin A movement do now conflict with Rin B, which means that you can combine one to five, one to six, two with three, five, two with six, right? Four different type of combinations. That's how you group them. For the other side of the street, three, seven, three, eight, four, seven, four, eight, you also another four different combinations. So that's how you group them. Once you decide how to group them, the signal timing optimization essentially is you want to decide how much time you allocate to each group, right? So that's signal timing optimization. So this, principle has been implemented for almost a century since the invention of traffic light. The principle is simple, but turned out to be very efficient. Why is it efficient? If you think about it, the major reason, one of the major reasons why this is very efficient is because when the traffic light turns green, you, you release the vehicle, and the vehicle will be released at a very high throughput rate. Okay? We call them saturation flow rate. For example, 2,000 vehicle per lane per hour. So you serve those traffic in a very high throughput. Once you clear the queue, you switch to another one. So that's one of the major reasons why this principle is so simple, so efficient. The limitation, certainly there are other limitations. The one major limitation is, if you think about it, the number of the lane owning the right of way is limited by the number of the lane in one group. So for this one, you have 20 lanes entering the intersection. Depending on, depending on your phase combinations, at one point of time, there are only four, right? Four lanes only in the right of way, or five or six, at the most six lanes only in the right way. All the other 14, 15, 16 lanes are waiting. That's the major limitation. That's the reason why over the years, and the traffic engineer are trying hard and try to in, overcome these limitations. So they come up with different type of unlock conventional design um, and implementation. So they try to add more length when you serve the traffic. So this, for this particular implementation, 
and you only have essentially one left turn lane, and then you allow the vehicle waiting inside the intersections. So you have three three lanes left turn. So when the signal turns green, when this phase to be served with our, our, is being served, you have more lane, more left turn lane. Instead of one, you have three. So that's a one effort to sort of improve the number of lanes having the right of way. And for this implementation, so you only also has one left turn lane, you have three through lanes, right? So you use a pre-signal, you allow the vehicle actually and to, to cross the barrier and to, to enter the other side of the street. So we call the control flow left turn. So now instead of having one left turn lane, you have two more left turn lanes. So they're waiting, okay? And then when the, when the uh, signal, when we are ready to serve this particular group, instead of having one lane, you have two more lanes, okay? So that's the, we call this a control flow left turn. Yeah, you see, so that's the, the when you, now you have plus the three through, you have three left turns. So six lane having the right of way. The storage capacity is the, we can see the storage capacity tunnel. Yes. Right, so it's essentially is you only have one left turn, right? And then you want to have more lanes having the right of way and to serve those left turn traffic quickly. Right, you want to because you want to maximize thru maximize throughput. So if as long as you can maximize throughput every time a point of time, and you 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 can, you in general you can improve the uh, throughput. So this is another implementations. It's a similar concept, but safer operations because this is a um, this is in the United States, and instead of using the other side of the street, you add a two left turn here, and we call them displaced left turn. Um, and then, so, you vehicle gonna travel to this one and then they're gonna wait in these two left turn lines. So now, when this phase are being served, you can serve this direction, like six through movements and two, okay? In total, we can serve this 10 lanes simultaneously. Okay? So, there are many other unconventional design. And for example, the, the infamous Michigan left turn is one of them, right? So that represents the effort that over the year, the traffic engineer has been trying very hard to make something happen out of this limited space. They try to squeeze more juice from this lemon. But now let's look at how connectivity and automation come to rescue. So connectivity, really, uh, because because vehicle to vehicle communication, vehicle to infrastructure communication, and you have better traffic information, right? You know what's happening. If you add automation to it, um, the implication is first of all because the vehicle vehicle cooperate driving, you have a shorter headway, and then the saturation flow rate can be higher. And secondly, here we because the connectivity automation, and then we assume a a consider a a, um, a fully automated environment. So when the vehicle enters the intersections and they have to follow the guidance of an intersection manager or intersection controller, okay, in a sense that you can do, you can control the real-time movements of the CEVs. And also more importantly, geometry design and the right-of-way allocation principle can be more complex to the point that it would otherwise confuse a human driver. So I mentioned there are many other unconventional geometry design, they don't get implemented in practice because they easily confuse drivers and they worry about and the safety implications. But with connected vehicle, and you can say if you give the machine clear guidance, that, should, that issue should go away. So that's just essentially this type of uh, right of allocation, for the, the uh, geometry design can be implemented, okay? So now you think about the spaghetti problem. With connectivity and automation, how we change the nature of that spaghetti problem. Okay, so in addition to the path determination and scheduling of the entry, you can adjust speed. So combining the first one, the third one, essentially, 
you can, in real time, you can determine the shape of the spaghetti. Okay, you can adjust the shape of the spaghetti, but certainly the coverage of the spaghetti has to respect the kinodynamic constraint of the vehicles. You have to respect maximum, minimum deceleration, maximum speed, etc. But you have a much more flexibility in adjusting the shape of the spaghetti. So previously, you cannot determine. You can only determine the path, and the speed will be controlled by the, by, the, by the drivers, right? So here, because you can control the speed, so essentially you can adjust the shape, not just the sequence of entry, you can adjust the shape of the spaghetti and to maximize delay, to minimize delay, to maximize throughput. So that's how connectivity automation can come to help. And so certainly if you add one more layer of decision, the problem becomes more difficult and but you have more flexibility, you have more potential to improve the efficiency of intersection control, right? So many researchers have recognized this potential and numerous effort has been made in the last decade. Most, if not all, most of them, interesting, most of them focus on number two and number three. The scheduled entering, they do the speed control, they forget about geometry design because they forget about, historically, we use a two-stage approach to solve the single problem, and now we're just assuming the geometry design is given, let's talk about pass determinate, let's talk about scheduling the delay, the entry, and we talk about the speed control to maximize throughput to minimize delay, right? So the geometry design is to serve the purpose of traffic control, and traffic control will dictate, so geometry will dictate really how the traffic control should be conducted. If your traffic control is different, your geometry also needs to be adjusted. So that's the key point I'm trying to make here. Um, and we need to solve this full version of the problem because this essentially is three integral layer of decision for one single problem. Just historically, we couldn't solve them, we just decompose them. But we need to solve this a single problem. But now, nonetheless, let's look at the current research, okay? Given geometry design, how we schedule the entry and how we determine the speed control to maximize throughput. Um, so two notable work come from, for the first one is come from the Professor Peter Stone from UT Austin, right? The second one come from MIT um, Sensible City Lab. The concept of two research are pretty simple, pretty uh, similar. They talk about reservation system. So you need a reservation to traverse an intersection. So when the vehicle entering the intersection, approaching the intersection, you send a request to the intersection manager. And the intersection manager is going to look at the current reservation to see whether I can accommodate this new reservation or not. It's the same way when you make a reservation at a hotel, and the hotel manager is going to look at the current reservation to see whether I can, I can, I can serve you or not. If not, they decline your, uh, your request, they provide a counter offer. So that's the system. So typically, the reservation will be taken first come, first serve. So the first come, first serve principle, right? Um, the difference between these two work, the first work is reservation represents one individual vehicle. So when you come and you send an individual vehicle and you can make a reservations. In a sense, you think about this first work, it's a more advanced version of stop sign control, okay? Because you talk about first come, first serve. You don't take advantage of platooning. The second work, recognize it's important to use platooning, use high throughput to achieve high throughput. So therefore the reservation actually can be a batch of vehicles, five vehicles, 20 vehicles, a batch of platoon of vehicles. That's a major difference. That's the only difference that between these two works. Okay. These two works um, has attracted a lot of media attention. Um, so the media interest is on the fate of the traffic light. So the death of the traffic light um, and make traffic light obsolete and uh, the future without traffic lights and also rip the traffic lights. Okay, it's always about tra fate of traffic lights. But I think this would be the secondary question. As I mentioned, traffic light is in really the de devices that implement a principle of right-of-way allocation, right? So we can get rid of the traffic light. We can still implement the same right-of-way allocation principle for traffic light, right? So the question, the key question here is, do we keep the same 
right away allocation principle or not? Is the new way of right away allocation principle more efficient than the traffic light signal? Okay, traffic signal. Um, apparently, based on the report, and they claim that twice as many as car will be able to pass through the crossing in the same amount of time at the intersection controlled by traffic light. Essentially, that compared with traffic light, this new way of right-of-way allocation can double the capacity, double the throughput. Right? So, and this is just not just about, it just, it's not just the popular, popular science report. It's actually for some professional magazine, and like IEEE's Spectrum, they also report this. So that gives you a conception where that I think trouble a lot of traffic engineers. So, so the, 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 the perception is that reservation-based signal-free operation outperform traffic signal control. This puzzles a lot of traffic engineer because as I mentioned, the principle of the reservation system is first come, first serve. If you think about individual vehicle, that's a more advanced version of stop sign control, right? So how come that can outperform the traffic signal control? So quite a few researchers, they try to conduct their own research to dispel this myth. One of the effort comes from my colleague, Professor Henry Liu. And so his lab actually conduct a research. They conduct theoretical analysis, Q analysis, and they do simulation. And so the dog is like this. And the... So this is for average delay. When the, when the intersection is not congested, this type of reason system works better. But when the intersection is increased, with demand increases, when reducing delay matter, when traffic signal control matter, reservation system fail to deliver. Okay, which means that when things become matter, they fail to deliver. So in, essentially, when the intersection in high demand, um, the, this type of reservation system actually perform worse than traditional traffic signal control. So traffic signal control leads to lower delay or higher throughput. So that's essentially trying, that's essentially dispelling um, the, the myth. Um, so here, this law you present a offline optimization procedure it cannot be implemented in real time. It's not online algorithm. So this is the benchmark, right? You can see that the actual signal control actually performed pretty well compared with this offline benchmark and outperforming this type of reservation-based system. Okay? So this research is not the only effort dispelling the myth. The other researchers also are also doing similar things. Um, so the result is pretty consistent. There's another research article published in just this year, as we present another effort. So the author conduct this type of real-time trajectory optimization, and then they try different type of scenarios. They observe that when the demand increases, the outcome from the optimal solution, the optimal solution from real-time trajectory optimization, tend to platoon this vehicle together, band this vehicle together as it is dictated by a traffic light. So you do this optimization, the entry or range or the spaghetti, and it seems like if you want to maximize throughput, if you have a lot of spaghetti coming in, you tend to group them together as it is dictated by a traffic light. They also numerically show that the signal-free strategy may not hold a clear advantage over the signal-based strategy. In the end, they conclude the basic logic of signal timing is, is, is like this, right? Grouping and taking turn, how you group. If not, the physical equipment may survive even after humans are not no longer, uh, no longer allowed to drive. Okay, that's the conclusion. I don't necessarily disagree with this statement because I'm not in the business of predicting. Okay? 
That could be the case. It could be we still use the same right away allocation principle. But what worries me is, in the effort of dispelling the old myth, a new myth is formed. The new myth is, certainly not the traffic light are here to stay, okay? This is secondary. The new myth is, when the demand is high, the best a online signal-free strategy can achieve, ensuring traffic signal control has to offer. So essentially, that's what everybody's saying, okay? If you, if you do this type of real-time control for the spaghetti problem, you will arrange all the spaghetti, do your best to optimize them. When the demand is high, when things matter, the best you can do while traffic signal control is That worries me. That's the, I believe this is a misconception. Why? What's the matter? Because you cannot why it's wrong. Because this paper numerically demonstrates this. Right? What's what? The issue here is, as I mentioned, the spaghetti problem is NP hard, even given the geometry design. So the stage two and stage three problem is NP hard, meaning that we can is unlikely we are not we will be able to find a solve the problem in polynomial time, which means that we cannot solve do the optimization in real time. Right? So the problem is intractable for real-time implementation. So therefore, people, the re because real-time optimization is intractable, so which has led to myopic first-come, first-serve, or heuristic method that produce suboptimal solutions. All the previous study, including the recent study, they're all trying to solve that spaghetti problem. So remember that spaghetti problem. That's the nature of the problem. They're all trying to solve that spaghetti problem. The spaghetti problem is NP hard, and you cannot, offline algorithm can solve it to optimality. The online algorithm is always heuristic, which means that suboptimal solution for the simulation shows, they, they're worse or at least up, at most on par with the traditional traffic signal control, and it's this doesn't mean that there's a better solution that's better than traffic signal control. Okay? So we either need to find a better algorithm or prove this statement theoretically true. Okay? So that's the issue. Even we say, hey, well, no matter what we do, and the best we can do is traffic signal control, that's fine. We have to prove that statement theoretically. Is that statement true theoretically? I will tell you no. Why I know is no, because I already had a solution algorithm which produced better results. So we call this a graph coloring based approach. And it's essentially a polynomial time approximation algorithm. Because previously you have heuristic, you have myopic. And what's new about approximation algorithm? Approximation algorithm essentially means that I have a theoretical guarantee on the quality of the solutions. Right? So here you talk about there's a gap, right? You have offline optimization, you know this, you can solve the problem in offline to optimality. And then you have this type of online algorithm, there's a gap in between them. So for myopic and, and, and heuristic, you cannot theoretically prove how good your solution is. A promising algorithm, we can have a proof. We prove, we, we know the accuracy. Okay? So the graph coloring, we call this as GCC. Theoretically, we can prove that in a four-way approach, for example, when the congestion level is uniform across all the pumps, the GCC can double the throughput as compared with optimal traffic signal. You will ask what happens if not there are 50% difference, 150% difference, and that's the distribution of the improvement. So we can improve at the minimum 25% to 100%. It was not held at this century. Really?
like why would it cause saturations in the pores of them because of the you know this you know to, you're pressing the apple without the stopping there would come a time with that it would be saturated is like the distant currency will if it would not would one that afford saturation no it's it talk about what first of all you have to be up to define what's a saturation what you refer is that the have a delay or not. So saturation meaning that, over saturation meaning that the Q is going to build up to go to infinity if you keep the same, if you keep the same arrival, right? So that's why you, when you compare them, when you compare different, when you compare different type of solution, a different approach, right? And use the same demand. If the demand, no, if you say same demand, if the demand is accommodated by all the control, you compare with delay, right? But then if you look at the throughput, so which means that I will look at how, what's the maximum demand you can accommodate, right? In, in order to ensure that the Q do not go to infinity, right? So the compare is always on the same basis. So we can we can prove that um, we can increase the throughput by 100% if the congestion level is not uniform, and we can increase 25% to 100%. Okay, so you may wonder how GCC work. It looks very similar to surface traffic signal control, right? It's almost like we just reduce the clearance time between different phase. Right, but I tell you the underlying principle is totally different. With the same demand, this is the comparison between GCC graph coloring control and traffic signal control. Okay, and visually you can see the difference. The principle looks similar. It's a grouping and taking term. Okay, grouping and taking term. Ah, oh, that's very great. Sure. Oh, yeah, the thing. <laughs> yes, um, it's actually uh, 1336 coloring problem because each, it's, it's, it's get to detail. Yeah, fundamentally I can say yes, uh, three coloring because we have three faces. But then for each platoon, we have 12 vehicles, so it's 36. I will tell you, yeah, good, good catch. Okay, so the, this is the animation and then the comparison of the delay. Okay, and you can see that the TS, this is the optimum, optimal, okay, optimum and uh, traffic signal control, and we compare with the GCC, and you can see that for all the demand level, GCC outperform traffic signal control, optimum traffic signal control, okay? So what's the secret? What's the new way of principal allocation? If you look at how GCC work, the first, first stage, we also do phase combination because you have to group and take in turn. The principle remains the same, grouping them. But how you group them is different. And secondly, once you determine different phase, and we're gonna make an underlying graph because you've, you have a path, and then make them K-colorable graph, we're gonna use the leverage the property of the K-colorable graph to schedule the entrance and to coordinate the movements. Okay, so I just, Quickly elaborate. Um, oh, sorry. I just quickly go through this one. Um, so let's look at how I group them. It's very similar to traffic signal control, but it made one huge difference, which is in traffic signal control, when you talk about left turn, when you do the phase combination, you have to include entirely the left turn. But here, we actually break them into two, two sections. So for this particular left turn, you have three phases, the red and blue and, and yellow. You can see that left turn, one portion of the movement belong to the red phase. The other portion will be served by the yellow phase. So why we do that? By breaking the movements, we can reduce the number of phases or number of combinations. 
Okay. So because if you think about the traffic signal control, when you do that, you need eight phases or eight, comp eight groups, at, at minimum four groups to serve the underlying demand, right? So here, we just we still use the same principle of grouping and taking turn, grouping, grouping long conflicting movement into one group. But when we group them, we break the left turn, for example, even through movement into two, two sections. One section is one phase, the other section being on the other phase. That's a major limit, major difference. So that allow us to minimize, minimize the number or reduce the number of phases or number of groups. That first one. Secondly, how we schedule the entry because now you have all this phase combination and then so within one group they do not conflicting but the, from the second group, between groups, they are conflicting with each other, right? So how you schedule entry? You schedule the entry by leveraging the graph coloring, um, okay, the property of k color graph. The intuition, okay, the intuition is how we can do that. The intuition is like similar to this. Okay, that's an intuition. So this type of precision walking, right? You have two groups of people crossing and they do not collide with each other. Why? You design the formation correctly. You design the pace correctly. So what people need to follow is follow the pace, follow the formation. You can ensure collision free. If people can do that, automobile vehicle can do it too, if not better. So you use this clock, so it's here, you have this 36 co graph coloring, a coloring statistic um, colorable graph. You just de design the pace of the AV, essentially you design the speed profile of the AV to ensure collision free. Okay, so that's the secret. And that's reason why when you see that there's, there's three phases, you see red phase and, and the yellow phase and blue phase, they enter the intersection simultaneously we coordinate them online, coordinate, coordinate them without collision free. That's the VHG difference, okay? So the connection between traffic signal control and GCC, the connection between these two way of right of way allocation principle is, first of all, the phase combination or the group combination under traffic signal control can be viewed as a particular demand decomposition under our scheme. Essentially, our scheme actually incorporates traffic signal control as a special case. And that's the reason why we will be able to, for a given signal timing plan, I can always design a GCC that outperform that particular um, traffic signal control and optimum GCC outperform optimum T traffic signal control. So this is the key point. The key point is both schemes utilize the principle of grouping and taking term, but the way of grouping taking term is different. The more importantly, the new way of grouping a taking term can now be implemented by a simple device like traffic light. You have to use connected vehicle technology to implement this more complicated way of right-of-way allocation. But it's, it's more efficient. Okay? So that's my major points. So major takeaways. The CEV technology can be leveraged to transform intersection traffic control because it changed the nature of the spaghetti problem. You have a CAV spaghetti problem. And secondly, given geometry, grouping and taking turn will remain to be near optimum strategy. However, the way of grouping taking turn enabled by the CAV technology can be very different from the other traffic signal control. And thirdly, the point here is signal free off strategy can outperform signal control, and intersection layout should be adjusted, okay? We should solve the, the full version of the spaghetti problem instead of the induced version of the problem. I will have two last comments before I finish. You may think about the principle I talk about is very futuristic, cannot be implemented now, but actually it can be readily implemented to this type of to this type of system, right? So you have all those, for example, overhead transporter in semiconductor fa fa fabrication plant, very congested. This is actually automated vehicle. You can implement that right away. Yeah. 
and also automated parcel sorting system. We can just design them. My final words, I said I'm not in the predicting business. I talk about the, the, the potential. I talk about this is the, uh, my intent is to show the potential, what, you, what, you can, what the, the CV technology can do. I'm not predicting this is going to be the future, okay? Because the future cannot be predicted, but future can be invented. So that's one of the futures we invented. Thank you. We have a little time for Q&A. Yes. So, what we see, do we don't know if you think happy in the middle of the internet, why it doesn't need to be a little work or so on, why it's that traffic signal, and flowing traffic, it's just, and then you have to see, it's like, it's a chicken and egg, so later, there's a the driving you follow me, yeah, so, you know, it's obviously the people at the service who will not pull all of the people. You know, I've got the issues you were listening. Um, so what, I, what I'm thinking is that when I get a lot in the future, there's so much advice in the job. If they're alone, like the like vehicle, the lady, it's exact space or it's exact right curve, then I'm making it, it, you don't know, no law. Um, the only survey that the sub sub seconds your actions for we see a bit of right. Um to let us kind of how yes. continue with it while it and the second thing I will ask was really look at you show blood was really show a single Peter town. Um, but our our Germany up is we is all these drop and single the work inside uh, like all me the single System that 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 work on the board it was get work inside out so, like from the signal to the the board. So I have has some of the period. There's no efficiency. Yeah, I, I answer the second question because your first question really is is pretty broad, right? So second question is, um, this is for isolated intersection, right? You have multiple intersection. What happened? So if you that this corridor also also being controlled, a fully automated vehicle environment, and I can control the full corridor. Then the same methodology can be applied because remember we treat the online as a graph. So in single intersection is a graph, and then the corridor is also more complicated graph, right? So the methodology applied, and also that can be because between corridor, between intersection, that a lot of things you can do. It can do better. You can do much, much better. There's a lot of things you can do. To give an example, you can design, you can use the intersections. I don't know that you 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 guys play the sliding game or not. So you can slide a vehicle and then sort of to to sort of intersections. So there's a lot of flexibility you can a lot of things can do in between intersection that actually be much much better than the sector. So actually, and actually related to your first question, between intersection. So in the, there's a lot of things you can do, design the topology of the network and design the geometry of the intersection to, to, to improve efficiency by leveraging the connected automated vehicle technology. So I can tell you in my, one of the futures, you don't really need an intersection. Because intersection current design is is sort of stationary intersection. In the future, intersection can be moving. You can use the changing lane and then do the swapping, and then essentially intersection is moving intersection and coming back and forth. So this way you can get over the intersection and and so that's essentially change the whole network design and topology design, right? So 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 this is a a fascinating topic that if you guys, because because I said you can you can change the intersection layout to do a lot of things. Do we have a the, our method right now? Given the geometry, we can do all the approximate algorithm to improve efficiency. We don't have a. It's an open question how you optimize 
intercession layout, right? So technically speaking, you don't, in the future, you may not, even you keep the intersection, you don't even need to have the design. So you can real time optimize the trajectory, the path. But the problem, that problem is very, very difficult. It's, in, it's mathematically intractable for real time implementation. That should have to have a, a another approximation algorithm to optimize the path or the intersection layout in real time. That also achieves and the, the, the network topology, even with the current network topology, you can do much better. Thank you. Yifeng, uh, yes. very, very good talk. Um, I have two related questions. Uh, question one is what happens when there's uh, not 100% market penetration? And let me, even if you have 100% connected vehicle market penetration, communications are inherently re unreliable. So you'll never get a perfect world that you paint. Yeah. Uh, number two is closely related, perhaps, depending on how you answer. What happens when there's a pedestrian in the system and the pedestrian does a push call? Yeah. So yeah, that's a question we get a lot, pedestrian, how much you worry about them, right? So um, in the design, we sort of use all the elevation <laughs> to help to solve the pedestrian traffic because you have to have an old pass. Um, and that's, a, that's the first way. The second way will be you have a dedicate, dedicated phase for for intersection for for pedestrian, right? So um, if you if you look at this this type of implementations, right? You can think about we do have a phase combination. We can have an AV phase. We can have a pedestrian phase. So pedestrian can be accommodated, and because there's the phase, you can stop them and you serve the pedestrian phase, and you call the AV phase. Similarly, if you have an AV, and you have a regular vehicles, if you really want to implement it, when the AV is in, in a certain sufficient market penetration, you have to do some pre-staging, pre uh, you have to have use of pre-signal to separate AV from those regular vehicles, and then you call this GCC as AV control, and use traditional traffic signal control for regular vehicles, right? Um, but once again, I, I, this is a practical question we need to consider. Um, my intent here is just show theoretically what is possible, right? What is possible? Because I, I observe there's a misconception that form being formed and the misconception is because the way we couldn't find a better solution algorithm, we almost give up on this direction. So I, I show them there's a potential that you can do better than the current traditional traffic signal control. Yes. Uh, the season builds up with the traffic low point. I think you will it. You just see it. Mm -hmm. You would look at the moon, hey, the gate is left. How many did you see it is at back? I think they can in the language as the system. Right. As one could be that they want to drill that for the term of the law. They always think out the traffic before the path is like, then then fix that height. You put it in high. Fix an exact one. Map is set more rigid. I was exact as in closing the thing. Yeah. It is when you freely get it higher. Now, how did this figure this out? In the fashion, by concordating with the, I can see every lot of the thing called the mid block. I would best start to listen to the better. So the difference is some, some work on pre-signal. Yeah, you, you install pre-signal, and then typically those work, in, the intent was to handle the left term, like, right? And so when, when the traffic light turned green, I said the saturation flow rate is pretty high and you, you have some initial loss time, a few seconds, um, but then t after that, the traffic will be served uh, at higher throughput. So I doubt that a pre-signal can just serve, how much, the, how much better a pre-signal can do for just for that purpose. The device and neighboring. Pre-signal? Oh, yeah, 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 pre-signal did quite a few works um, on this. Yes. Yes, Yihan. Look, I'm going to bring in Bracelet. Uh, it is, uh, did you know I need to talk to you all? 
you know, so the work why they feel like Yeah, the combination that's a good question. Um you talk about this, right? So we call this this is this is the we call demand uh decomposition. So the phase design, uh, well, grouping design will be based on the traffic demand pattern. So you have to know the demand pattern, and then you essentially you do a, a phase combina combination. So mathematically, we translate into a bipartite matching problem. So you, you solve a bipartite matching problem, and you can get all those phase combinations. So this is not a unique phase combination, there are multiple. Yes. Yes, yes. And did you carry it completely into the process of life of slave? Say it again. Yes, yes. That's essentially the same. You, you, you can, yes. You can imagine um, if you really want to implement this, it's like a time of day operations, right? Based on the divide the whole day into different time of day, and then for different time of day, and you based on that nominal demand pattern, you design that phase accordingly. And then if if you uh, switch to another time of day, you have to right um, have to switch the uh, the design. But what I was trying to emphasize, the design is pretty robust, meaning that you can actually change the on, even the online demand pattern change quite a bit. You still use the same design, that still works because we have so much buffer. Um, but if you really want to achieve the maximum potential, you can actually do this type of time of day operation. Mathematically, it's a pretty simple problem because that's why we claim it's a non is a polynomial time algorithm. Yes. Holy Mactal looks to the holy blessing in the figure of TC in the point of solar statistical testing of the book of the theory and all that. Uh, yes. The algorithm on these things that they are bringing to help the other family. Right. There's no no all red time. But if you think about um, if you think about the, the traditional signal control, the reason why so if you think about this traditional traffic signal control, the reason why you have all red time is you want to have sufficient safety buffer between traffic streams and you worry about the last conflict point but there's many be before them they got the more than necessary sufficient time so in order to ensure the minimum the the, the most dangerous conflict point you provide unnecessary buffer time for many previous conflict points so that's really why in our operations, we do have the same level of buffer time, but the buffer time is designed for each individual conflict point. That's the reason why you look at pretty busy. You don't have that all clearance. Okay. Once again, you have all the clearance. The reason why you have all the clearance, the whole empty, because you want to ensure the last one, the last conflict point, have sufficient buffer time. There's many buffer po conflict points in between. They have more than necessary. Okay, so that's why I said we can ensure that buffer time and to, to ensure safety. That's the reason why it looks busy. There's no all, all red or, or empty space, the whole, whole empty space. About the safety implication I also emphasize here is I said that we, I have to provide sufficient buffer time to ensure safety. And, and it's always, I assume everybody perform follow my order, right? And in case something have some accident, and then you have sufficient buffer time to avoid coll collisions. So that's the that's we how they design the buffer time. But if we talk about if somebody is driving crazy and then how how you mess up the whole thing, right? So that's a different story. So I, I try to emphasize the risk assessment. The risk of this operation will be different from the traffic signal control. Okay, the risk. And for that perspective, you could say, hey. That really depends on your comfort level about the risk, how much risk you want to take to get a better efficiency, right? If the risk level is too high, then you pro probably st you stick to the original right away allocation principle, right? You can still get away with the traffic light, you see, we, you see real technology, but 
you can you can you can use the same right, old way of right way allocation principle. When you have sufficient confidence, you move to that new way of right way allocation principle. It's all grouping and taking turn. The key issue is how you group, how you take turn. Yeah, so I noticed that the baseline for traffic signal is uh, actuated control. I'm assuming it was fully actuated. Uh, I was thinking if there was also significant difference in performance compared to more, more aggressive uh, controls such as adaptive. I don't know if that has been compared. Right, so for their study, for the study, my, my colleague, that is actuated signal. For our study, because we're giving timing, giving the demand, right? We're giving the demand pattern and we try different level of demand level, congestion level, we just increase demand pattern. But anyway, my question is for each of them, or I optimize it. Okay, I optimize that traffic signal. So because it is a um um it is a um the signalized intersection, uh, single inter isolated intersection, so therefore for that demand pattern this is optimum already. Yeah, we compare with optimum. Yes. Uh, I have a question about the, the computational complexity. I Wait. wonder why the GCC can reduce it to like the poly polynomial time. Does this still generate the detailed tra uh, speed profile for each vehicle or not? E um, because you have that this polynomial time and actually we don't have a real time optimization either. Right? So that when they design it, the design is pretty simple and you do not. You don't do real time optimization or trajectory control. Um, you have that thirty six. You have this thirty six color, colorable graph, and you design that based on this colorable graph. So essentially, for for one particular movement, the speed profile is predetermined. So when you enter the intersection, I just give you that speed profile. You just follow that speed profile. When I design that speed profile. And I respect your all the kinodynamics dynamics constraints. So the, the so similar is like um, autopilot when you get to the airport, right? So they provide you to guide you. So here, when to get into the intersection, I give you a guidance. The guidance essentially is a speed profile I give to you, and that speed profile is now real time optimized. It it is predetermined. Uh, well, 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 the auto part here and the at the next stage to. Say that again. A cost in the pro, uh, I mean, the cost is there. Copy, please, and here we'll get at this. Right. So, essentially, with, yeah, this is the tracking point we're talking about, right? You have to reach this tracking point. So, we try to meet, so sort of maintain a constant speed as much as possible. Or sometimes you have to sort of stop a little bit or slow down a little bit. And those are all pre designed. And and then, and then we have to do all the computation to ensure there's no, even you sort of slow down and you do not block the, the the guy behind you or other crossing. So this is all the design. That's why you have a lengthy. That's when why you have three step, right? So the second step make it a thirty six color ball, and then you have to do the movement coordination um, synchronization to achieve collision free. I think that's all the time we have for questions. So everyone. Help me in thanking uh, Dr. Yun. Thank you very much.